All right, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience using the Galaxy Watch Ultra in my walk from Toronto, Ontario to Niagara Falls, United States. So let's get into that. First things first, I just wanna talk about the Galaxy Watch Ultra and how it feels. So this is actually a bigger watch, but I'm not gonna lie, it feels pretty comfortable this year. I don't know what it is about it. I think it might be the roundness of the sensor and how it sits on your skin, on your wrist, but it is pretty comfortable. I, I didn't really have any issues in this walk. And as you can see, you probably saw the duration of the walk, but I was walking, I think around 10 hours of straight walking. I did have some issues with the watch pausing, which I'll get into later on. But yeah, overall, in terms of comfortability, the watch felt pretty comfortable. I kind of forgot about it on my wrist and I was using the trail band, this band right here. And as you can see, I, I've had the watch for a little bit and the band is definitely getting discolored. So that is something to note with the lighter colored band. And honestly, I, I'm not even sure how to clean this thing efficiently. Like I've definitely washed it, but yeah, I don't know how to clean it properly. But yeah, so this is, this is how it looks after a couple weeks of using it like every single day, you know, sleeping in it. I take it off in the shower because I feel like this material is just not good with like water and stuff like that. So I don't wear it in the shower. But yeah, generally, this is like everyday usage of the trail band and how it looks. But anyways, on the walk, like I said, it was comfortable to use the watch. Had no issues with that. The screen brightness is good. So even from like in the early morning, like we started the walk at 2 a.m. And it was dark outside, obviously, to like during the day, you know, the morning with the sun rises and stuff like that. No issue seeing the screen because the screen is extremely bright. And this is the watch face that I was using. So I like this watch face because it has a lot of information, but it doesn't look too cluttered has the battery percentage on the side. I put that there and I got my, the water. I can measure how much water I'm drinking every day by just tapping that and adding. And then I got, you know, obviously the time and the date. I got the steps in the middle, my heart rate right here. I can quickly open up the calculator right there. I got the weather and then at the bottom is like the energy levels. So yeah, you know, my energy is not that good today, but yeah. So that is the watch face I've been using and I use it on the walk. And I've, I enjoy this watch face because like I said, gives you a lot of information, but it's not too cluttered. So now let's get into like the actual walk and how the watch performed. So I wasn't able to complete the whole walk, but my friends, two of my friends who went on the walk with me, they actually ended up making it to Niagara Falls, United States. I stopped right here in Oakville from all the way from Toronto, right here, we started at York Mall, but they made it way past here, all the way down to Hamilton, kept going Grimsby, and then they made it to Niagara Falls and crossed the border to the United States. So those guys are beasts. Definitely go check them out. Me so black on Instagram, the one trade Los. It was all for raising money for the community that we grew up in to give back to the kids in there. And these guys made it to Niagara Falls and they raised over $40,000. So that was, that's just crazy in general. But let's talk about my experience with the watch. And yeah, I made it to Oakville. So I actually only walked in total around like i think it's more around 10 hours but the watch tracked nine hours and 34 minutes the average walking speed was around like 4.4 kilometers i was wearing two watches at the time i was wearing the galaxy watch 4 classic which i gave away on my channel thank you to everyone who has been supporting the channel this far and congrats to the person who got the watch but yeah both of the watches were saying the same amount of average walking speed the average heart rate was also pretty similar and you know the calories and then we got the steps and the elevation gain so one thing to note actually with using the walk, it tracked a total of like 43 kilometers. But one annoying thing is during the workout, I had the watch on automatic pause. And basically what that means is that when you stop walking, the watch will pause itself. It will pause the workout automatically when it detects that you stop walking. But when you start walking again, it's supposed to detect that you're moving and then continue tracking. But I had many times where I was walking for like a couple of minutes, maybe like 10 minutes and the watch is not tracking my steps and not tracking my heart rate. Like the workout is just still paused automatically. So yeah, I had to at some point just turn off auto pause because it doesn't really work that well. So at some point I just turned off auto pause. I think it was around like maybe Mississauga because it was getting in the way of actually tracking the whole journey properly. So I think I actually walked more, well, I definitely walked more than 61,000 steps in this workout and more than nine hours and 34 minutes for sure. But yeah, that is what they tracked. So aside from that issue, I feel like the tracking was pretty accurate. I was also carrying an iPhone 15 Pro Max that was tracking steps. I had the other watch that I was tracking and it was all the steps were lining up with each other. I think it was pretty accurate in general. It's just that this was pausing. So it had a little less steps than the other ones and the, the workout time was less. Yeah, so auto pause, not reliable. 
And in terms of battery performance, the Watch Ultra actually did pretty well. Like this is one singular workout for like almost 10 hours. And the Watch Ultra, I think around the end of that, it was at like 25%. It was able to carry me all the way to the end of the next day. I started this walk at 2 a.m. on August 10th and then got home later that day on August 10th and it lasted all the way into the nighttime. So the battery is, a, is definitely a beast on the Ultra for sure. I mean, I expected it to go longer than that, but it, considering that it was a workout that was active, you know, the sensors were going off the whole entire time. Like the heart rate monitor was constantly tracking, the, tra the steps were constantly tracking, you know, it was constantly updating. Considering all that, I think it did a pretty good job. And for like the first five or six hours, I had the always on display on. So even that killed some battery. And then after that, I turned off the always on display. So I didn't put it into power save mode, but I turned off the always on display. So I feel like if always on display was off from the beginning, this watch would have lasted even longer, maybe even like, you know, 1.5 times the amount that it did for me in terms of battery percentage. And then on top of that, if you put it into power save mode and turn off like different things like Bluetooth and, you know, LTE, I don't have LTE connected on this, but I think you can still turn it off. Maybe. Let me see. Or maybe it's just, it's off by default if you're not, if you're not on a data plan. Yeah, I guess you don't really got to worry about LTE killing the battery when you're not connected, but you could have turned off Bluetooth, power save mode and stuff like that to push out even more battery life on this watch. So definitely a beast in terms of like durability and the battery lasting a long time. And the tracking seemed like it was accurate. Unfortunately, I didn't have like, I don't have any actual professional tracking devices to track my steps and my heart rate and stuff like that. But it seemed like it was pretty accurate. And this is the workout. So one thing that's cool about Samsung Health is you can actually see your previous workouts. So going back to August 10th, I can go into that workout. I called it the Niagara Walk. You just tap it, then it will show you all the stats. It has this cool little picture. You can see the map and you can also see a chart of like the increase in heart rate and like the speed. Cause there were times where I had to like run and catch up to the guys because uh, eventually my foot started giving out. So I wasn't able to continue walking at the same speed as them. So, you know, there was times where I had to speed up quite a lot of times towards the end too. But yeah, you can see the map and you can full screen the map and actually move around the map like I showed you and see the, the trail and where you went. And it's pretty accurate. Like this is a little pit stop that we made at Dollarama in Mississauga. So. The tracking with the GPS is 100% accurate based on this trail right here. You can see all the turns and stops and things like that. And then this is the final stretch where my foot was like literally like I'm walking like this. And then as I stepped on my left leg, it would just give out like it would start collapsing without even me like doing anything. So, you know, I tried to go to Shoppers Drug Mart to tie it up to get some you know, pain medication and stuff like that to be able to push myself even further to keep going because I really want to keep going. But at that point, the guys left me. So, you know, I'm in Shoppers Drug Mart. I'm buying the medication. I'm spraying on, you know, Biofreeze and stuff like that, tying up my ankle even more and just trying to, you know, be able to go. And then eventually I tried. I pushed all the way until here and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to catch up to them. And then I'm also not going to be able to just walk at a good pace. Like if I kept walking at this pace that I was going at towards the end, honestly, probably like another 24 hours on top of what it took them. Like it took them 46 hours because they slowed down in the end. Like they were getting destroyed as well, mosh up. So they couldn't keep walking as fast as they did from like the beginning. So if, imagine if I was there, I would have slowed them down. But anyways, that's the story, but it's really cool that it tracks literally all the routes and everywhere that you went on the GPS and on the map. And you can view that afterwards. You can also change the view of the map too, to a satellite picture. So that is really sick. We've got the terrain map as well. Really, really cool functionality right here in Samsung Health. This data is provided by Google Maps, obviously. But yeah, you can see your heart rate on this side. Then you can also see your average speed on this side. And then you can go to elevation, to cadence, to heart rate. And you could just see how it changed throughout the walk. But the max speed, I was walking like 12.7 kilometers an hour. And then my average was 4.4 .4 kilometers an hour. So we got the heart rate zones. It's pretty cool because it tells you like where your, your heart rate was at, like the percentage and the duration. So low intensity zone was like 31%, which was three hours. So for three hours, my heart rate was in between 97 and 116 beats per minute. And then we got weight control zone, which is just above that. And my heart rate was in that for five hours and 56 minutes. And that is 117 to 135 beats per minute. Then you got aerobic. I was in that for 30 minutes, basically 4.9%. That's between 136 and 155 
beats per minute. So it tells you the different zones and stuff. You got your heart rate recovery. It's pretty cool to show you all this information afterwards. So you can go between max heart rate and the heart rate reserve, and then you can look at the duration for which your heart rate was at. So like, this is the whole workout, the nine hours, the end and the beginning, and you can see where your heart rate was at at each point in the workout. Then you go to laps, and this is like, I think each lap is probably like one kilometer, I believe, something like that, yeah. Each lap is a kilometer, and you can see how fast I was moving for each kilometer. So the first kilometer I was 5.1, then we slowed down a little bit, 3.9. When I was all right, we know when I wasn't hurt, I was like above five kilometers an hour. But then as you see, I had to catch up to them. But then you see 1.7, 4.2, it was a 4.9. So it kept going up and down, you know, but yeah, this is interesting information. And then you can see 3.8 towards the end. That was probably like the, one of the lower times. It was 2.7 right here and 2.8 before I had to stop. So yeah. This is like really cool statistics though, really cool to you know be able to see how fast we're going at different checkpoints. And you can even um, see it on the map. So the first kilometer, you can see right there, each lap or each kilometer is viewable on the map. So pretty sick. Then you can see the, the weather. Maybe this is like the average weather for that day. Cause obviously the weather didn't stay at 17 degrees for the whole time that we were walking. And then you got your VO2 max. I still don't fully understand this stuff but it's your maximum oxygen intake during exercise. It's measured in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body mass per minute. VO2 max is a common measure of cardiorespiratory, heart and lungs, health and endurance. A higher number is better. The VO2 max measurements providing sense of health are estimates based on your heart rate. So it uses your heart rate to kind of measure your VO2 max. And mine was just good, you know, it wasn't amazing, but it was good. It's apparently 41% top 41% of my age range. Then you can take notes. So you can write down notes of your workout. So how you felt, stuff like that, big things to note. And at the top, you can add an image, which is cool as well. And yeah, this is really cool. You can also share your, your stats too. So you can do like a random background or you can put your own with the gallery and then you can also get the map and then you can choose which data is shown on the image as well. It's cool how you can see all this information in the Samsung Health app. But overall, my experience using the Galaxy Watch Ultra in this nine, 10 hour walk or workout, it was a good experience. This watch, I feel like it performed pretty well. And I don't have too much experience with other high-end fitness devices or health trackers. I had the Apple Watch Ultra one, but I didn't use it for anything like this. So I can't really tell you how it performs against that. But in general, I feel like the Galaxy Watch Ultra held it down and was pretty good. But as I'm making this video right now, I'm noticing that like there's some seems like there's chipping of the paint so that's kind of whack you know this i thought it's supposed to be a durable watch that's kind of whack still um but i'll save that kind of stuff for when i get to my full review of this watch but for now this was just about my walk to niagara falls or my attempted walk to niagara falls if you want to go and donate the gofundme is still up for that fundraiser that we were doing on the walk you can still donate to support the kids and families in the community that i grew up in and yeah I also got this Ultra Human Ring here. I'm going to be reviewing that very soon. I've been wearing it for like the past week or so. I'm just waiting to get to the two week mark where it's fully calibrated for my body and I can actually make a real review on my experience using it. So look forward to that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. But until the next video, we are out. Peace.